In the name of our Lord. Amen. We enjoy a great deal of scripture in Holy Week. We use many words to pray, especially today. And we do so because this is the fundamental, crucial story of Christianity. If we read only a few verses of the Passion, we lose the power of it. If we learn and know only part, we as Christians are incomplete. We don't expect to retain every word, but somewhere in the familiar scriptures and prayers of these tradeum days will be a phrase, a word, even an idea that catches your attention and that rings true in a new way for you. You will carry it with you to bed that night into Easter tide and hopefully well beyond. We hear it in the context of the full ritual. Today, tomorrow, Easter day, and last night. Instead of trying to hold fast to every detail, I suggest immersing yourself in the whole of it. Take off your watch, turn off your phone, surrender to it. Let it speak and flow around you. Let the most powerful story ever known enter into you. And then reflect on a truth that has moved you. Amidst all these powerful words, we also inquire of the silences. They too are part of the story. Particularly evocative for me is Jesus' silence in response to Pilate's questioning. What is truth? Silence. We and they might remember Jesus' words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Will this haunting question be remembered after the resurrection when Jesus tells a dubious Thomas, I am the truth? Pilate tries again. Where did you come from? Silence again. In the heavy hush is his wordless answer, and we know something has changed. Incredulous and now desperate, Pilate says, do you refuse to speak to me? Clearly the silence unsettles him. Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? So far from true, Jesus does answer, explaining to Pilate that Pilate has only ever had the power given him by God. The taunting, flogging, dragging the heavy cross are all things our Lord could have escaped, and yet he didn't try. Isaiah's suffering servant comes to life. We heard it sung beautifully, or we heard it read beautifully by Kelly. He was afflicted, and yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers are silent. I think Jesus' followers were stunned. I think they were afraid to ask, where is God in this? And then the psalmist's words we just sung and heard echo back their growing, mounting despair. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. 
and my God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry? Those familiar words ring so deep, you can feel, you can hear your heartbeat as they fade from your ears. With or without words, God has answered eloquently into the silence and gives us pause to listen. On Palm Sunday, I said the moments of truth, that moments of truth reveal Jesus' identity and our own. Now, the crucifixion and the resurrection are the most epic instances of this ever known. Woman, here is your son. To the disciple, here is your mother. In eight words, his tender loving care is revealed. And we see he too knows the terrible pain of giving up those he loves, of entrusting them to each other ever after. His dearest friends, companionship, the women and men who follow in our present, that inmost understanding they share. He's giving up in that moment. John's gospel said this from the very first lines. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And his perspective is credible precisely because he knows what it feels like to be human. In human pain, to suffer, to love, to have affection. And here's why I think this matters. When someone tries to comfort us in our pain or grief, if they know nothing of such things, at best they can be sympathetic. Even well-intentioned, it can feel rather ineffectual. But if they too have known grief and pain themselves, their consoling presence is authentically empathic, whether in words or in loving silence. This is Jesus being human from the cross. God's mercy is so true and comforting because in Jesus, God is not only divine, but also fully human. God in Christ knows what it is to come to the point of human loss, even death. Finally, Jesus says, it is finished. He bows his head. He gave up his spirit. To me, this is the loudest, most profound silence. Jesus gives up his spirit out of love for us. And in doing so, he opens the door to eternal life. What is really finished here will be death. We too have things to surrender to God. Things which get in the way of a life in Christ. We might need to give up a spirit of prejudice, suspicion, envy, greed, apathy, or something else. For that gift of new life can only happen when we love and trust God enough to yield and not hold back. When we too can say, it is finished.